。大家好，我是 Jack。今天我要跟大家讲西方人的名字相关的由来和一些有趣的事情。接下来我都会用英文，如果你不想听英文的话，不要害怕，可以开中文字幕就好了。I think a lot of people get confused by Western names because there are so many of them, and it can be hard to know how to say them, right? So today I want to talk a little bit about where we get our names. In Western culture, we often have three names: a first name, middle name, and last name. The first name is also called a personal name, and the last name some people will call the family name or surname. Let's start with the first name or personal name. Now, of course, we have to have that, right, so that we can tell each other apart. Well, believe it or not, there are actually a couple or maybe a few cultures in the world where they don't have a personal name. One example is the Machiguenga. The Machiguenga of the Amazon rainforest. Believe it or not, they just call each other by their relationship. So children will call their mother mom, and the mom will call their children daughter, and they don't have any personal names for each other. But of course, the tradition for almost all cultures around the world is that we have a personal name for each other. And even the UN has made it an international law that every child should have the right to have their own individual name. So where do English speakers get their personal name? You may know that some names are extra common, right? Like John or Mary or William. These are what we would consider the classic names or the traditional names in Western culture. These are usually based on saints' names or the names of holy people. Sometimes people are named after another person who is not a saint or a holy person. So you might name your baby after a friend, or a family member, or a famous person. And by the way, it's not disrespectful if you name them after someone who is still alive. They can be still alive at the same time, or they might be someone who has already passed away. So, for example, I'm actually named after a famous author. You can guess who if you want. Some other reasons that people will pick a baby name: one is meaning. Actually, most of the Western names do have some meaning behind it. A lot of cases, we've forgotten the meanings nowadays. We don't really remember what the names mean, but they do have a historical meaning. So sometimes people will look in a book of baby names to find the original meanings for the names and choose a meaning that they want their baby to be like. And nowadays, the modern trend is to choose a name just to be different. My favorite example is Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. Did you know one of his children's names is this? I don't even know how you say this. How do you say that? X Ash A12. <laughs> It's true. I'm certain that his son will probably be called by a much easier name to say, though, like Ash. So next, let's talk about the last name or the family name. And it might seem like this is something we have to have, right? But actually, there were many times in history when people didn't have family names. In the English-speaking world. Family names were only commonly adopted after the 15th century. The reason they started using family names is because the government at that time required that the church start recording every person's birth, baptism, and death. And to do that, they had to record both a first name and a family name. That was a turning point where a lot of people who didn't have family names suddenly had to choose a family name so that they could be recorded. And so people started. Picking all kinds of family names. The most common source for family names was occupation or job. What was your job? For example, my family name is Smith, which is the most common Western name, by the way. And the Smith was the person who worked usually with different kinds of metal. But there are all kinds of these other names that are based on jobs. You can see some of them here. Other people chose a name based on a physical characteristic. Like black, if their hair was very black, or Armstrong, if they were a very strong family. Some people chose a name based on where they lived, so maybe the town or the geography of the place. For example, Hill or Ford. Another common way they would get a family name is to choose the father's name and then name the whole family after that. So let's say that for this family, the son's father was named John. Then this son's family would be Johnson because he is the son of John, and this was true for other cultures too. So, for example, in Scotland, Mac meant son of. So, if you had a person named Donald, they would be named MacDonald. But not MacBook. 
not son of book. <laughs> okay, then what about the middle name, right? Where does this come from? Remember I told you that people would name their children after saints or holy people? The reason they would do that is because they believed that saint or holy person would have a special protection or blessing for their child. After that, people soon started getting the idea, why don't I name my child after multiple saints? Maybe they will all protect and bless them. So then they started having a first name, and a second name, and a third name, all named after saints' names. Later on, people felt that this was useful because if you have 20 Johns in the town, then you can tell them apart by having a middle name. By the way, not everybody in Western culture gets a middle name. Some people choose to not give their child a middle name. And also, some other Western cultures get much longer names, especially Spanish-based cultures. Perhaps you've heard that for Spanish people, they will often have their mother's family name and their father's family name as their last name. And they might have multiple names in the middle to recognize some other famous person or town that they come from or something else. For example, are you familiar with the artist Pablo Picasso? Did you know that that's not his full name? His full name is actually Pablo Diego Jose Francisco de Paula Nepomuceno Maria Feroz Remiro Cipriano de la Santísima Trinidad Ruiz y Picasso but obviously we're just gonna call him Picasso. Okay, I think the next thing we need to talk about is what happens when a couple gets married. In Western culture, it's traditional that the woman will take the man's last name and her family name when she was unmarried will be called her maiden name. Uh, maiden is a young unmarried woman. So that is her name when she was young and unmarried. In America, typically the woman will lose her middle name and her maiden name will become her middle name. I know that might be kind of strange. For a woman before she's married, she might have first, middle, and last name. But after she is married, she will have first, maiden name, and husband's last name. But that's not true in all cases. Nowadays, some women are choosing to keep their maiden name as their last name. And in those cases, sometimes their children will have a combination of both the father's and mother's name. Also, in some rare circumstances, sometimes the husband might take the wife's family name. For example, if they both prefer the wife's family name over the husband's name, maybe his family name is not a very nice name or not an easy name to say, then they might choose instead for him to take her name. Or, rarely, if the wife comes from a family where they had no sons, only daughters, one of the daughters might ask their lover to take their name so that that family's name will not die out. Similar to the Ru Jue culture in Taiwan. What about changing your name? Is that something that people do in Western culture? Yes, they do, but it's maybe not as common as some other places. It can be pretty expensive to change your name in the US. It depends on where you live, but it's usually somewhere between 300 and 500 US dollars. But some people still choose to do it, maybe when they want to start a new life for their family. A good example of this is the actor Hakeem Phoenix, who played Joker in the Joker movie. His family's name was originally Bottom and they didn't want to keep this name. They didn't want their children to live with that. So they decided to have a new start for their family and they named their family Phoenix after the bird that is reborn out of the ashes. Oh, I almost forgot one way that people get their personal name. Sometimes someone other than the parents might have the job of giving the baby a name. This is sometimes the godfather or godmother which is a special person in that baby's life who is not their parent. Typically, Westerners do not go to a fortune teller to get a name for their child, but they might ask their friends for some help. If you have anything you want to add or ask about the culture of names, you can leave it as a comment below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.